Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, I have been wanting to just get a little bit more of my podcast on YouTube because I understand some people are visual learners and they want to watch and see what's happening. So today, you guys are going to be listening to an episode where I talk about the five things that I learned in my 30 to 31. I know I'm 31, everybody. Year of life. And I think they're super transformative and I think you guys are going to relate to a lot of these things and I hope that no matter where you are in your age or your journey of life that uh, these can maybe inspire you too. So make sure you guys just keep listening. Let's get into the, into the details and uh, we'll check you guys next time. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys listened to our last podcast, we actually were outside at a coffee shop, which was really fun. We did an interview uh, specific to my industry. Super cool. You should go back and listen to it. But one of the things I wanted to change this year with the podcast was just getting out into kind of more of like a natural habitat for me. I feel like when you're doing something, you want to feel authentic about it. And sitting in just like my kitchen at the kitchen table talking to myself just feels weird so we're out and about right now going for a little walk we're on the camera this is also on youtube so if you're more of a visual person go ahead and check it out there but five lessons i learned at 30 i get a lot of questions about my age um i think it just has to do with like all the different things that i'm doing right now and they're like how old are you like where are you at in life i'm like okay Here's where I'm at in life, everybody. I am <laughs> Michelle Sonor. I am 31 years old, and it's wild to think that I'm actually in my 30s now. So a lot has changed. I think Britt's been with me for the last five years. So she's been with some me through some very transformative things in my life. And uh, this is really funny, you guys. I just have to say this. She's walking uphill right now. <laughs> it's just really awkward. But anyways, so... I would say 20 to 29 was like one of the most transformative years of my life. And everybody was always like, your 30s are the best. And I was like, probably not. Like, this is like the hardest year of my life. I can, you know, you really can't really see it getting super great. But truthfully, I got asked the other day and 30 was like the best year of my life. So many things happened. Um, I kind of wrote down, like I looked back and what's happened in the last year is I changed business models. So that's pretty big. That's like basically like starting a new business. Uh, I was a commission salon. I am now a rental salon. I've expanded my team quite a bit, which has been awesome. I went on more trips than I ever have in my adult life in one year. So that was pretty awesome. I feel like I've just been on so many adventures, which for the last god decade of my life I feel like I've just been like work 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 so I think adventures have been crazy uh opened an Airbnb so started my little rental property journey I got engaged which is also exciting um and then uh bought my second house so I bought my first house at 24 and then rented for a while and now I'm moving on to that next step so we're getting married in a house no dogs are coming next, guys. Don't get excited. Um, <laughs> but with that being said, 30 was a very, I would say, uplifting year. And some of the top things that came to mind when thinking about what I learned in my 30s was, one, working on yourself is the best gift you can ever give yourself and others. A lot of challenges stem from you. And I think... We want to place the blame like our relationships aren't rich because of so and so but really all of that just comes back to us and i found that by investing in myself whether it be therapy whether it be podcast whether it be self-care um, whether it be better balanced to my schedule so that i'm able to do things that just like really excite me um, changing things in my career that makes me happy all of that honestly just makes you a better person and it makes you a better person for you, for your family, for your team, for your friends. And it all builds confidence, which I think a lot of being a really great person and a great friend and a family member is comes from confidence. So that was my first one that came to mind, which was crazy. Uh, second, you learn and grow from every situation. So got tattooed on my arm, life happens for you. And with that, it truly was like everything has a reason for happening. Like if I look back and I think if you guys listening really look 
back, you think to like a negative situation and it's not right away that you feel like it changed your life at first. Obviously it feels like a catastrophe and it's horrible. But then when you see how that has shaped you for a future situation, I believe that it all happens how it should. So I think one of the things you can say to like switch your mindset around that is be thankful for the hard and life is uncomfortable. Life is hard, but just let it be hard. If we accept that different things are going to change and you're going to have tough situations, when it happens, it feels a little bit less catastrophic and you just understand that part of life is the design of going through different hardships and different challenges to grow and make you into the next layer and the next version of yourself. So that's two. Three, this one is a big one and I started teaching this a lot this year (laughs) because your girl had no boundaries before, but boundaries are a very like hot topic and so I hear so many people talking about it and one of the things that I coach people when I'm teaching them to kind of start having boundaries because you need boundaries in your work life your personal life you need boundaries everywhere is that you can have boundaries and still be kind a lot of times you think that by setting a boundary in place you're mean or you're hurt gonna hurt somebody but at the end of the day like if somebody doesn't have the bandwidth or the capacity to like accept that conversation from you and accept that you're having this new boundary in a new season of your life then they're probably not meant to be in that season of your life so another that's another thing with boundaries just kind of like the hard things like you're always going to have to come back to them they're not just going to be like okay I set this boundary one time and now that's it I never have to set a boundary again in my entire life like creating new boundaries at different seasons of your life is literally just part of life. So if you can accept that and just remember that like you have the ability to change them or add them or subtract them or whatever it might be, it's pretty darn cool. That kind of leads into number four. Uh, My therapist actually told me this because I'm not one that likes to feel bad feelings or sad feelings or negative feelings and I would always be conflicted like why do I feel two emotions right now? (laughs) Like, so one of the things she literally said, it was like the simple phrase is you can have two emotions at the same time. How simple is that? Like I can be happy and sad at the same time, or I can feel excited and scared at the same time. And it's okay to honor those different emotions. So as you guys can kind of hear, it's probably been a little bit like internal, I would say (laughs) my lessons in my thirties. But yeah, you can feel two emotions at the same time. Easy peasy done. And when I was trying to think of number five, (laughs) like literally the first thing that came to my mind is like, I will never work a Saturday again in my life. (laughs) But to a little backstory on that. So I have been working weekends literally since I was 14 years old. So I'm 31. Every single weekend has been dedicated to work. And not that I'll never, like obviously there's things as a business owner you have to do on the weekends, but I just like value that off time more than I ever have. And I think if you are dealing with having guilt from taking off, like I just focus on giving 100% when I have times that I'm supposed to be on. And if I give 100% then, then it doesn't make me feel bad taking off. And I just like value the time with my fiance. I value the time with my family. I value the time with my friends, like going out and experiencing the world. Like we literally have one life to live and I'm passionate and I love work and I'll never stop doing that. But at the same time, like, there's just so much more to see. So it was kind of a joke, but, you know, also at the same time, when I really got thinking about it, I was like, that's pretty deep, Michelle. Um, And one that's like a bonus. I know this is supposed to be five, but I wrote this down and I couldn't let it pass was, like, who you surround yourself with and your environment. Oh, I cherish it so, so much more now than ever. Like, from the people to your work environment even just the way that the space looks for me like my salon it's like has tall ceilings big windows like there's positivity just like running around the space all the time and like if I was in a space that was negative and dark and oh my god it would totally change my mood so anyway a little bonus number six guys just surround yourself with people who make you feel good and if you're in an experience that doesn't make you feel good leave (laughs) like it's just as simple as that like you don't have to keep yourself in these situations that that don't make you feel good so 
I hope you guys enjoyed a little inside sneak peek to my feelings. Um, I, I get a lot of times too that people listen to my podcast and they feel like they know me better. Um, I've gotten the compliment, I think it is, on uh, people that are following me on Instagram and they're like, you're pretty private about like, your personal life. And I'm like, you know what? I kind of like that. Like, it's good that you guys aren't missing anything from a business perspective, but you feel like you know these like tidbits into my personal life, but maybe not too much. So I'm not being an oversharer. So I love the, I love that like on the podcast, you just get to know a little bit deeper. All right, friends. Well, I would encourage you to write down five lessons that you've learned over the last 365 and really appreciate them, thank yourself for them, and continue in your next year of life to build on them. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the joy of this podcast today. So with that being said, dun, 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 podcast is including everybody and we can't finish out an episode without doing a little ask me anything. Um, So Ask Me Anything, if you guys are new to the podcast, is where I let my listeners literally ask me anything. And this question was cool because I get this all the time. So it says, I'm looking, this is somebody who reached out via email. I'm looking for more help with how to go about a few things in my business as an owner. I would love to work with you and was thinking that maybe shadowing you would be a good thing for me to do. But maybe it's something different that you offer that would benefit me more, question mark. Either way, I want to find the right resource for me to invest in. Any help with this decision would be great. Thank you so much. So what usually happens when someone reaches out to me like this, because there's a lot of different ways that you can work with me. It just depends on what you need. And I always want to find the best option for what you're directly looking for. So obviously I'm always hyping up my six figure stylist event. I think it's transformative, amazing. Like I've never known anybody to go to it and not take a bajillion things away from it. But with this particular um, owner, I knew she wanted something kind of like immediate. So I have some other options for her. So one option was to do like a one-on-one call. Um, I only do those select. I don't have those available all the time on my website just because um, you know, girl can only have so much capacity. Oh, that was so sweet. This lady was just smiling at us on our walk. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, so one-on-one calls are an option, but I only allow a select amount of those um, per year. Um, the next option is to come to a shadow day with me. So included inside of my stylish shadow days right now are a 60-minute mentor session and then the whole day with me behind the chair. So you really get to see how I operate. You learn hair techniques. Um, And so that's a great option. And for this style, she actually chose that option because she was like, I want to come in. I want to meet with you in person. Like that's more valuable than doing something virtual. But I know depending on time, travel, all of that, different options. But coming in 2024, you guys, I also have some really exciting stuff uh, that I've been creating. So if you are a salon owner and you want more salon owner friends, you're going to want to pay attention (laughs) to this. Or if you're a stylist and you want more stylist friends that get you, you're also going to want to be paying attention to that. I'm going to be coming up with some small group stuff and uh, I'm not going to launch it on the podcast yet, but I just encourage you guys to pay attention to my website, pay attention to my Instagram. You'll see it all over there. It's going to be absolutely killer. Um, And then also if you are a beauty professional and you're listening to this, and you want to come to an event that's going to literally change your life, you have to sign up for our Six Figure Styles 2024. Uh, currently, at the time of this recording, our wait list is live. Um, but you can always <laughs> click the link below uh, in our show notes, and it'll take you to whatever resource that is, whether it be our wait list or whether it be that tickets are available. Also, just send me a DM. I'll hook you up. We'll make sure you guys are able to get a ticket. But it's transformative, amazing, and uh, I'd love to work with all of you guys. So thank you guys so much for your questions. And if you ever want to submit one of your own, I'm your girl. Just hit the ask me anything link in the description of this podcast. And as always, this podcast helped inspired you. Please share it with a friend. This is my labor of love. I just, I ask that you just share it basically. I don't ask for any, any money, uh, for, for the knowledge or education, but just share it, share the love. And, and honestly, it means the world when you reach out and let me know how you guys are liking it. So thank you guys so much. XOXO.